Live from the epicenter of independent cinema, it's Film Stuffs with your host, Jake S. Weissman. Tonight's guest, writer-director Lucas Guy Taylor. With me, the original Mark's nephew, Jack Quint. Let's start the show! Welcome to Film Stuff's Live, everybody. I'm so glad that you could join us. I'm Jake S. Weissman. Uh, I wanted to do this show for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I'm constantly looking for the next format. If you've been following Film Stuff's at all, you know that live is a brand new thing. Who knew? that we would be doing live a year ago, but this is where we're at. I want to do interviews. I want to talk to people. This is the best way to do it. I'm so excited. I have my buddy here, Jack, producing the show, and I'll introduce him in just a second. And we have our guest, Lucas Guy Taylor, who is one of my favorite people to talk to in the whole wide world. Uh, another reason why I wanted to do this, this movie, is, or this movie, this show uh, is, directly related to what's going on with streaming and fandom, Disney Plus. Uh, I see people getting very excited for brand new things popping up every day. There's a new Star Wars show every week. There's a new Marvel show every week. And I'm so happy for the fans, but I wanted to follow something that I was excited about. And I get really excited about independent film, particularly starting in Chicago, going through Illinois and working our way through the entire country and soon the world. Uh, and when I was in college, I had a teacher, professor who taught uh, my cult studies class. His name is Reed Schultz, is Reed Schultz. And one time I was complaining in the booth saying, you know, Hollywood should really do this. And he got so angry at me and he said, no, you should do this. Why are you wanting other people to do it? You should. And that stuck with me. That was a good 10 years ago. And uh, as I'm sitting here wanting everybody to talk about independent film, I said, all right, then I'll do it. Jack Quint, my beautiful producer, will you show up, please? Where are you? Here I am. The Thank original. You for me, Jake. Oh, thanks for doing this. I really appreciate you. This Thank is so much fun. For, yeah, I'm really glad to be along for this. I have known Jake for 22 years, it turns Figured out. Figured that and, one out. And I cannot say that for more than three other people. I, maybe three. Right. Probably two. Maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm really glad to be, to be a part of this. Uh, you're in Chicago these days. I'm in New York these days. We've, uh, you know, we came up doing acting stuff together. Uh, throughout middle school and high school, and we've um, come to be independent filmmakers in our in our own different ways. So this yeah. is a really cool kind of a project. So I'm glad to be on board for it. Thanks, Jack. We're coming live from three different time zones right now. How cool is that? That's pretty badass. I mean, it's hard to coordinate all that stuff, but you are central time zone. I am East Coast, and Luke is in California. Luke, the independent writer, director producer this guy don't get me started on this guy i i don't want to give too much of an introduction because we're going to be talking to him like for a long time so let's bring luke on in oh but jack we got yeah. some stuff coming up uh a little after the interview uh, how's the show gonna, gonna go down Right. Well, uh, this is episode one, so thank you all for joining us. Hopefully, it's not just our moms out there, but we know that they're watching. So, <laughs> hello, Gigi. Hello, Judy, and uh, and and all the mothers. Really, anyone whose mother is watching, we we thank you and uh, we welcome you. Uh, so, if you want to uh, help us out with the program at all, you can send a Venmo to Jelly Roll Chicago, and you can check out JellyRollChicago.com, where you can find out information about the show, where we stream it on Twitch, on YouTube, and on Facebook. So that is where you can go to like, share, and subscribe. So go ahead, you can go and do that. And while Please you do. are, yeah, and anytime you are watching, you can send us comments on the platform that you're. Uh, that you're viewing us on. <laughs> Bones is watching. Hey, Bones. Bones. Bones isn't my mom. That's good. <laughs> Off to a good start. <laughs> Great. 
Hey, we, we've got about uh, eight people watching right now. And oh, <laughs> Amber live. Thank you, our good friends. Oh, Amber Amber's here. Live. Wonderful. I'm so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, recently featured you on Amber Live. So thank you so much. And Glad thank you for the idea. You totally uh, gave us this idea. How's it going, Judy? Hey, mom. <laughs> We've got Larry Lamori. So Hi, Larry. We've got some awesome cross pollination. This is wonderful. Going on. This is fantastic. Synergy, um, synergizing, as they say. So uh, you'll talk to Luke for a while. We'll talk about the current state of cinema, the future state of cinema, what's kind of been going on in the last year, and where things are going forward with streaming and whatnot. And then afterward, I have a special treat. I have <laughs> little I Klondike have... bar for you. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Oh, there's GG. Hi, mom. Um, I I made a music video which I started to screen at film festivals last year, immediately before the pandemic happened, and um, so I got to do Wonderful. one in person, and we'll show a little clip from uh from my award-winning music video, Slow Jam Girl, later on in the program. I absolutely can't wait. Uh, anytime anyone has any questions, anyone wants to say anything. Go for it. We will do like a Q&A thing at the end with all three of us. But uh, feel free to ask as we go along because, you know, we're just this is going to be a real loose chat. It's real. I don't know. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say that it's at like anything because we're our own special. We're thing. about to find out what it's like. We don't need to tell you what it's like. Let's experience <laughs> what it is. So I'm going to buzz out and get Luke in here and you guys. Let's can do talk it. About it. Oh, Lucas Guy Taylor. Lucas Guy Taylor, are you there? Yes. <laughs> oh, with a, with a cat in tow. Oh, my God, Kitty. Yeah, say hi. <clears throat> oh my goodness! I nice. Just spit coffee. Hey, don't don't over. don't Venmo the show if you're watching. <laughs> like, yeah, boo, <laughs> boo. Off to a good start, Luke. Uh, wow. I'm just kidding. You should do what? it. You hey. should Venmo the show. You should Venmo the show. We got people in Florida watching. Thanks for giving this a shot. Uh, Luke, you are one of my very favorite independent filmmakers. Thank you. Uh, it's it's mutual. Uh, I've talked talked about your film on films on the record at length. So I love it's, scrapers and clean sheets. <laughs> you're my favorite uh, first interview. Every time oh. I have to interview somebody first, I'm like, we'll get Luke. I know I can, <laughs> Easy. I know I can talk to Luke for a little while. It's uh, like the guy that comes in and just directs pilots. You know what I mean? They're like, that guy <laughs> knows how to fucking direct a pilot. That guy knows. So it's, uh, I'm really excited just to talk about what's going on with you in your life and listening to what you've learned over the last year. Uh, you know, when I, oh, I was going to tell this story earlier. Uh, and you know, like I've been on a lot of your shows, you've been on a lot of my shows. Um, I don't know where, if we've told this story before, but, uh, Luke used to work with me at the movie theater in Chicago. Indeed, We yes. both worked at the least expensive movie theater in Chicago. Most inclusive, least ex exclusive. You know what I mean? True. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, and we didn't really connect until, there was one night where we were both off. We both got off at the same time and Luke said, Jake, Last Flag Flying is playing at the Cinemark and it's gonna leave next week. Do you wanna come? And I said, yes. So two of us, which were practically strangers, go see Last Flag Flying, which is the saddest war time, like grieving, film i've seen i've seen it only the once it's a, a spiritual it's, sister to yeah. uh the last detail which is one of our favorite films uh and so and link letter directed it and it's brian cranston and lawrence fishburne and uh steve carell so we're like we got to do this by the end of this movie i swear to god i was sitting like this <laughs> just sobbing into my hand just uh, <laughs> trying not to let luke see because <laughs> I was having a moment, obviously, but then we were fast friends after that. Do you have any memories of what you don't know? Yeah. Yeah. What you don't know is like, uh, I, I walked out of that theater, which probably seemed like I went to the bathroom, but what was actually happening was this movie was panicking me the fuck out. And I was like, 
whoo, hard to breathe in here. And it, for some reason, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, I love Link later, but, uh, and it's crazy, this theater is closed now. Do you know the Cine Arts in Evanston is closed now? Isn't that like, crazy? Like, uh, fucking casually, the pandemic, I'm sure we'll get in there. It's, it's horrible. One of, but the it's one of the only places. Theaters. Right, and that's one of the only places you could probably go to in Illinois where you go to Last Flag Flying and it's a packed theater so much so that me and you have to sit all jacked in the front. Yeah. So we were just jammed in that screen and it was just too much and I had to just get out of there to catch a breath. I was like, oh my God, Rick's bringing the heat on this one. And, and, I, and, I, and we came... We came at it from two very different angles because, like, I had I hadn't seen the last detail uh, yet at that point. Um, I was just like a huge and am a huge Linklater fan, and so I was excited to see it for, for from that perspective. Uh, and what I later learned was like that's like the darkest fucking timeline of 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 the last <laughs> detail. That, it's the nightmare. <laughs> that's the nightmare, Batman. Like that's like the like where Snyder goes in in Justice League, like if Dark Side and Superman take over, that's last flag flying uh, that's right. compared to last detail. Oh my god. Last <laughs> detail is a is a warm blanket and like you know low lows, but the highs just so so far outweigh them. Whereas the real this one is Iron like, Man. This one's like, <laughs> it's, it's really sad. We're all just kind of old and sad. It is a very serious tragedy, but it's at least my, my son. At least my son died like via friendly fire. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was like Jesus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Robin says I was okay with that film until I discovered it was a true story, and then my heart broke into a million pieces, maybe two million. Yeah, it's brutal. Absolutely brutal. Tough movie. Uh, The Last Detail, on the other hand, Hal Ashby, Jack Nicholson, Randy Quaid, just one of those tragic comedies that you can put on over and over and over and over again. And Uh, and, and I have. (laughs) Luke, uh, so you have a lot of, you got a lot of pies in the oven, man. You (laughs) spin a lot of plates. It sounds that way. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about Bad Movie Brunch, please. What is it? Bad Movie? Bad movie brunch uh, has has like sneakily like past eighty episodes. Like we started, uh, me and Katie Grotzinger, uh went to get went to film school at DePaul. Like did our grad school, getting our masters in screenwriting, and uh, yeah, masters. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know I'm setting the table, but you know I paid good money for that, so. Uh, we did that, and we also, when we did like our LA quarter where we came out here and interned, she was one of my roommates, and we we're like, oh my god, we have to do a podcast. And it's just one of those things that I kept in my brain, and I'm like, yes, of course we should. And, and you know, sometimes people throw that shit around, but I'm like rarely kidding when it comes to that stuff. I'm like, no, we should do that. Uh, so when I finally, you know, Tom Hush was doing uh, No Coast Cinema in Chicago, we he was working at the theater with us, and uh, I was also like, obsessed with Kevin Smith and obsessed with Kevin Smith uh, forever and always. And he was been podcasting since 07. And so I'm like, this is a, a very attainable, easy kind of thing to do. And that's 100% true. It's also cheap. It's still crazy cheap to like to put out lots of content in that medium. So still like the tip of the iceberg for what they can do in podcasting. And that's what we do. Started out me and Katie Grotzinger uh, talking about, movies that maybe are lesser loved uh it's usually a love fest for me because like we're we're usually coming at it from like positive angles uh unless like we just really despise something the most interesting conversation is generated if katie really hates something and i love it uh later on we brought taylor taylor into the show my beautiful wife my muse lead of everything i have made and will um and she's also added a completely different dynamic to it because Unlike me and Katie, she's not a, a movie buff that kind of came along with our relationship. Whereas like she's, you know, of the theater world and she has lots to teach me and I can do the same. And it's actually really nice as opposed to uh, being three people that are all diehard and have the same or close to the same opinion and education and everything like that. So we have a good time. The show kind of was conceived because I loved Batman v Superman and I'm like, I would like to write an essay, but... I got an English degree and I wrote too many essays and it sucked. And so I'm like, well, I'll never do that again. But talking is no problem. <laughs> um, and so Understood. we just kind of started there and we've talked about lots and lots of movies since. One of them being clean sheets. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of that, I have a clip of Bad Movie Brunch talking about clean sheets. This is Lucas Guy Taylor 
talking about clean sheets. And also just like finding yourself, being able to see yourself in a movie and putting yourself on the map. Like how many Rogers Park fucking movies are there? How many movies where we like go through the neighborhoods of Chicago like that? And if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. How many times... I mean, shit, they end the movie, like, the end of the movie and the credits go over uh, St. Ignatius, where me and you went to church yeah. uh, a bunch of times, where I'm getting married in August. Mm-hmm. So, like, even to, like, there is a film that exists where I can point to that one day and be like, look, that's where me and Taylor got married. Look, that's where I used to live. I used to walk down these streets. It's my favorite thing in the world uh, about, like, sometimes about, like, comics or cinema or anything like that, where I can, like, point at a, a panel or look at a scene and be like, holy shit, this is this feels a million times realer to me because I've like been there. It's not outer space. Insightful. Well, all right. Yeah. Talking about Roger's podcast. Part, it's a great yeah. podcast. I definitely, definitely suggest it. Now the latest episode you just did was Zack Snyder's Justice League. Correct. How, yeah. how many times have you seen Zack Snyder's Justice League? Well, in color or in in black and white? Oh, tell me. And, I mean, I want to know the whole gray. thing. Uh, I've probably seen the Snyder Cut. It, it actually surprised you. I'd say like four times, uh, and then and okay. then the black the black and white once. Um, but that's because okay. I have a full time job, and a four hour movie is tough to eat up as much as I want to. But I, I, if I could keep it, if my wife would let me keep it on all night and day, I would. But. That's how I ended up watching uh, The Irishman four times the first week with a full-time job as well. I devoured The Irishman uh, much Um, later in life. Well, you said that you started the podcast with Batman v Superman in mind. Now you've done Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm -hmm. You and I have personally talked about all of the changes since the pandemic and the viability of this stuff. Um, how does that make you feel like that you started this podcast doing BVS and now the Snyder cut has come out and you've done a podcast on it? Um, it's weird too. Cause we also, uh, when the news broke like in 17 or 18 that, or maybe even 19 at this point, I don't remember when Ben was like hanging up the cowl or whatever. Uh, we went and did justice league when it came out on Blu-ray, like the Joss version or whatever. Uh, when we were just kind of like, it was me kind of just being like, so this feels wrong, right? Like I feel really cheated. And so I feel vindicated in in one respect to get at least the end of the story I wanted. Like I, and I'll say it, you'll hear it on the podcast. I completely get why somebody wouldn't like this uh, take on the characters or, or everything else. Like if you, it, Zack Snyder is phenomenal, but he's like one of the most divisive filmmakers we've ever seen. Whereas like, there's not a lot of fence writers with Zack Snyder. It's like, you love him or you hate him. Sure. Uh, so uh, I, I feel good, but on and the perspective of like where theaters are going and like what this means for streaming and like HBO Max could, I, I'm not saying they planned the pandemic. I'd never say that. No, but like the fact that like they were coming in and I remember seeing the billboards for HBO Max and being like, why would I care? And then it was like their, their starter show was like Love Life, which was nice. I like Anna Kendrick and like they were nice little uh, shows popping up here and there but it was like the promise of something to come. The sure. fact that WB teamed up with them and then they're like, we're going to drop theatrical releases and it's not going to be a charge like when you watch Mulan on Disney+. Plus. And it's, if you have the subscription, it's there. All of a sudden, they just gained more legitimacy than than maybe anybody. So like shoulder to shoulder with a Netflix and a Hulu and an Amazon. Which is it, so, it's, uh, you know, I, sorry, keep going. No, that's it. I just, it's, oh. it's, it's really unexpected. It's fascinating to me because when this news dropped of HBO Max, there were some people who were really, really upset about it, saying it's going to destroy theaters. Um, And now it seems to be commonplace. Like it seems to already have found a home for us. Uh, They are talking about um, because Godzilla versus Kong did so well in the theater that they're they're debating whether they want to do Dune uh, as a theater exclusive. but I don't really. It's is Dune is Dune the one that's gonna bring everybody out? Like I'm They're sorry, all saying like, it is. Uh, I, maybe I'm wrong here. Like I'm not trying to like just come here <laughs> and throw big fat fucking opinions around. But like, is that the big studio draw? The movie that like found an audience late in, in the first place? I don't know. I, no. I mean, it seems to have a very deep following, um, and that's you know 
what we were talking about earlier about finding the fans and then just kind of finding the fans with never ending pockets. Um, and it seems sure. like that's a good point, you know, uh, with superheroes, with certain properties, just nonstop, like give me more, give me more star Wars. I want to, I want to explore every single facet of this universe. Please. Sure. Um, so how does that then? So you've also made a film, right? How you also make films yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Can I love we, it. And you love it. Can we show a trailer for uh, Winnie and Charlotte? Yeah. My right? latest short the, starring you, Jake, alongside my wife, you should watch it. That's cause this guy's amazing. You're as kind. Remember Martha uh, with the, the beret? She always brought her own glass. I don't think I ever charged her for a single drink. Perhaps that's why we find ourselves in this predicament. <laughs> Neither did I. Touche. You know the plan. Stick to it. Ooh, where can you find that? Hang on, my my headphones came unplugged. Oh no! Uh, yeah. One more time. Can you hear me? Uh, you can find Witty and Charlotte on Prime, uh, where you can also find his film, Break. Uh, Jack, will you play the trailer for Break, please? So what the hell do you plan on doing with yourself all summer long? Any big plans? Absolutely not. Yeah, well, we can work on that, can't we? I genuinely cannot wait to see that movie again now that I live an hour away from where it was shot. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I can so, too. I don't know. Yeah, my these damned AirPods, they uh, right. linked up to my phone. Sorry so, about that. No, it's okay. It's uh, So I have a kind of a broad question. I hope I don't, it's not very, let's see what you do with it. Um, does Zack Snyder, Justice League, HBO Max affect you? whatsoever as an independent filmmaker and like that's I, we just watched a trailer for uh your feature and a trailer for your short and you have more things coming yeah i'm i think so i mean there's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of parallels between kind of the stuff that i think zach snyder does um as well as like indie like in terms of indie film too like all of his movies are expensive all of his movies are uh, like a lot on green screen like don't get me wrong he's not making flicks on the cheap but in the fact that it's the film business you know so a lot of this stuff is a product and a lot of the stuff you're getting from the corporations that that sort of run the table um not all of it's made with tender love and care and straight from the heart uh I think that's the lifeblood of indie film. And I also think that's the lifeblood of the flicks he makes. Like he's not making movies 
because you know it pays the bills. It helps. It's nice, but I think he's making fucking Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and and Justice League the way he did because he's like, oh my god, I love the comics. I love these books, and I love Injustice. And like, what if I did it this way? And it's absolutely his own take and stuff, but he's doing his best to pay homage and uh, to the stuff that inspired him. Like this dude loves Frank Miller. This dude wants, wants to cast Ben Affleck complete, like, you know, fucking Batman complete with a cleft chin. Who's big and hulking just to like make him look like Frank Miller's dark Knight returns. And he wants to do all this, you know, amazing stuff that, you know, we see, you see what happened. Like when you bring in a ringer, so to speak, and uh, try to cut up the movie and turn it into something that's more, maybe palatable and you got the first cut of justice league or, um, you know, or, or, or take a, take any flick from any other franchise. And it's not always uh, straight from the, the sleeve, if you know what I mean. Sure. So it, it serves more as an inspiration uh, to you than as a detriment, I guess. I don't know if there's like, yeah, I don't know if there's like a war, like, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm an indie filmmaker, uh, and I love indie film, absolutely. But it doesn't mean I didn't just watch Godzilla vs Kong for the spectacle of it. Like right. there's there's a place for it, and like I think that's necessary for the balance of it all. Um, I, I literally turned off San Andreas to do this show, and I was yeah, telling them, I was yeah. Like, this movie is perfect. This is a perfect and, film. So. And if 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 theaters are going the way they might be, like there's a world, and this could be we could sound crazy like a year from now, but it's not insane to think based on the circumstances right now having like a whole year off of the theater an industry that was tanking hard i mean we worked at a theater and saw like movie pass and like amc by like bailouts oh and all this crazy shit that went down mm -hmm. and that was two two three years ago like it wasn't ancient history it was already like a big decline in trying to make that happen so the future is absolutely in limbo for for what might happen and maybe maybe there's more of a middle ground in film where it doesn't have to be us and then Zack Snyder. Like there used to be mid-budget movies from studios too. Remember that? Remember like when they made rom-coms and stuff <laughs> and like everything else? Like there was other there was other choices too. So I think all of this stuff uh, and all the options you have on streaming now like have done nothing but bust the game wide open and provide hundreds of, uh, upon hundreds of more opportunities for people that are coming out here trying to get a gig like that. Definitely. I 100% agree with you. Uh, it's been a while since I've read a dissenting kind of opinion. Um, when, when this HBO max stuff started, you know, it was just, this is going to kill theaters. I can't believe it. And it just doesn't, what it seems to me is, um, I find it fascinating that when we worked at a movie theater, if someone would have told me, listen, we have a four hour movie. It's an R rated Batman movie in four, three. Yeah. Like I would say, how are we going to show this movie in my four house? How, am, yeah. how are we actually going to feasibly make any money off of this? Well, and it, you're going to ruin people's life too, because your employee's life. Cause remember when we had, <laughs> remember we had fucking, that that real blockbuster Blade Runner 2049 like don't get oh, me wrong like awesome movie Oscar winning movie. movie uh like you know what I mean um it, but that's a movie that that's right there Denny and I there I was disparaging Dune and I feel bad like because I'm like that's a film <laughs> that's a filmmaker that loves his shit uh, his movies are so good in the movie yeah. that did the best in the but we had to stay till fucking 1 30 in the morning yeah right. but when you're sweeping up fucking Blade Runner 2049 and it's 1 30 a.m. and you got to open the next day you're kind of pissed at Denny Villeneuve <laughs> 100 percent. I remember that with uh one of you know Transformers 4 Transformers 5 it's three hours long and I'm not getting out of the theater until 1 30. Um, mm -hmm. that's why you know we tried to get the Irishman to come to the theater and right. uh first of all that was like what a Netflix movie at the theater and I yeah. feel like when we get back to it, Netflix is going to start having some movies in the theater. Uh, I don't know. Certain movies you... warranted it. Like, I mean, Irishman probably, I don't know, have the numbers in front of me, but I know people in Chicago went to like Landmark and went to like Music Box perhaps, like, right. and saw it several times. Like our customers are, are, were like, they weren't like, oh, I saw the Irishman once. They were like, I saw it three times. And That's so true. everybody was Steve. paying good money for it. Steve, God Steve bless him. Going to Park Ridge, going to Park Ridge and seeing it three times, and that's so I'm cool. I'm gonna see everything. 
but that also not only could we not get the film just anyway, but then it's the same question of how can I fit this one movie into one theater and make any money off of it? If anyone's coming, I can show one showing, I can show two showings and you know, I can't be selling, I'm a doubtful we'll be selling that out. So um, I yeah. And it's, we had four theaters, you know what I'm saying? It's not right. like, it's not like it was a, a megaplex and then megaplexes are probably like, I don't know, man. I find it hard to believe that they even exist anymore, save from like big cities, at least not for a while. Like maybe it'll maybe it'll be a novelty because like, look, like vinyl records are, have somehow come back and make tons of Merging. money again. Yeah. Like surging and like, you know, VHS, I don't think will because that was a shitty quality. Like movie theater is but, still the, the utmost quality. People want to watch things on a screen, but it might just have to go a different route. Like yeah. everybody's renting the theaters now and stuff like that. And, People collect VHS the way people were collecting film. It's just a far more accessible, you know, like collecting actual like reels. Um, mm -hmm. Like my friends who are into VHS are into like going to the store and finding these really specific films that you just can't find anywhere else. Um, right. Because they wouldn't make any money on DVD. So it's always fun to watch that. Uh, evolution. Fuck DVD. Oh no. Apologize. I'm just kidding. I would um, never say that. <laughs> um you know what speaking of that can we play uh can we play this really awesome clip from uh kevin smith please uh luke is the guy selling you merchandise and stuff like that so uh he don't want to be doing that his whole life of course naturally he wants to be making films which he's done already he's made two movies but this is the adorable part you go to amazon you check him out jc will put the the uh, the links in the um, uh, chat or whatever. Um, so it's on Prime. I think it's free if you're a Prime member or something. I could be wrong. However, uh, Lucas uh, Luke Luke's name is Luke Taylor, and uh, his girlfriend's name uh, was Taylor, and then he married her, and now her name is Taylor Taylor. That's impressive. Isn't that adorable? Taylor squared, <laughs> man. Taylor Taylor. So Taylor Taylor is the star of his uh, two flicks. T2. T2. Very much. T2. <laughs> um, so if you want to help out a fellow filmmaker, go watch uh, Luke's flicks and tell him Kev sent you. And what was that like? That was, that was a good day. That was a good day. Uh, that's a benefit of, of working for the man himself over at Smodco. Um, he's, he's a good guy. The, all those, the, everybody, everybody would, would back you up on it. That Kevin's the nicest guy in the business. Like what a sweetheart. I mean, you, you hang out with Jay and silent Bob. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't say we hang out, but I do work. They do pay my bills. Uh, that's for sure. Um, and while they're the face of it too, like I mean, <laughs> Kevin and Jay are incredible, but like Jordan Monsanto, who who runs that place, who's like my boss proper, who like is like in the trenches, is just a just a badass. <laughs> like that's gets so it cool. done, everything done. Lot, like talk about spinning plates, man. Like that's the that's the one. And Kevin too, like Kevin and Jay are like the hardest fucking working people ever. You wouldn't believe what those schedules are like. It's like. You know, we we thought we wanted that life, Jake, back in the day, but it's like I don't know if I envy that schedule, man. Like it's yeah. it's it's wild times. Busy, busy being in the business of Kevin Smith. Yeah, uh, that's it's too cool. I mean, if I was, I don't know, just being a part of that is so uh, crazy. He's uh, View Askew and Smodco is such a crazy inspiration. Yeah what's it like being in this kind of a company in the middle of Los Angeles? Like you are in the world of mainstream film, but yeah. Smodco is realistically a super independent, like it is true independent cinema uh, as far as like, you know, from red state on. Right. Sure. He, absolutely. So yeah. What exactly is that like? I think it took like it takes on many forms like Ke like Kevin it seems like the king of the pivot like this company seems like the king of the pivot like uh it, oh I don't want to do flicks uh necessarily why don't we just podcast and then him and Scott podcasted and then it's like oh well, right, let's do flicks maybe we could make this walrus movie and he makes tusk and it's fucking awesome uh and he kind of just is able to do his own thing and kind of always been ahead of the game it feels like 
um, from the jump. And now, you know, a pandemic strikes and hits a company that makes its nut on live shows and live podcasts. And then all of a sudden movies pop ups, uh, socially distant and, and wonderful fan experiences, giving people and like hope in the midst of a pandemic, giving venues that normally play like music and everything serve food like that have been shut down a chance to, to make a little scratch. Um, and then also to have uh, the website like jnsilentbob.com uh, moved out here. And now uh, the Smodco company, uh, that office here in Los Angeles is, is the one fulfilling those orders. And like you said, it's, it's, it's kind of indie in that respect. Like it's not a massive team. Everybody gets their hands dirty uh, to, to fulfill them and stuff. And all of a sudden, we have that happening and we have the accessibility to have Kevin and Jay come in and sign lots of stuff and get like cool merch out all the time. And like, we can bring back stuff from the old view askew store that everybody loves so much and, and, and bring it out here and do stuff like that. And then the man's also got, you know, that Kevin Smith club where he talks, like talks to people and does AMAs and all sorts of original content. It's nonstop. And it's like always making use of, of the latest uh, in greatest technology. Jay too. I mean, like Jay has been ahead of the game on the Twitch thing. Uh, you had to educate me on Twitch and I'm like, Oh yeah, Jay talks about Twitch. And I had no, I had like no idea what a like thriving medium that is, uh, until you opened my eyes to it. And I'm like, Oh my God, these guys are, are in this position for a reason. Everybody here has their finger on the pulse. So I'm happy to be a part of it. Here's your finger. Far from the pulse. <laughs> that's awesome uh t what is movies pop up so if you've seen the flicks as i know you have you're being a good host though um uh like movies is the is the restaurant that's introduced in dogma it's where the guys work in clerks too uh featured throughout the viewers universe after that and uh jay and bob strike back and also in reboot but um fictional fast food chain kevin owns the rights to that so he can do with it what he wants like derek uh barry who's like the mastermind behind these pop-ups he's actually he's he, he does stuff in chicago as well we had lots to talk about there like beauty bar he had a hand in uh and stuff like that that people like there and he did uh that saved by the bell pop-up which i think was in chicago and then it was also out here and uh getting getting to getting to do that is one thing he said but getting to do it with like getting to do movies with kevin where a studio doesn't own it uh it's it's all owned by the guy and so like you're get you're going right to the source for approval and everything else uh everybody said like i guess he said that that just made everything way cooler and it's given me the opportunity to do cool stuff like this like rub elbows with comic book men and uh literally like sell shit with like guys that are famous to me and cool and like go to the secret stash, which just switched locations and everything else. But um, getting to enter that world, that was like <laughs> for the first, for the first, like, you know, 27 years of my life was just like a fict fictitious thing that didn't exist. But like, it's sort of just manifesting destiny to move out here. And then I happened to fall into this gig not shortly after. And, you know, you start, I started as an assistant and then just kind of worked my way into different stuff. Like, I'm like, oh, I can, I can do that, and I can do this, and just trying to be a team player, and then slowly being like, I can write, and they're like, oh, Luke can can write in Kevin's voice, and I'm like, that's because that's the voice in my head. Now I was like, that's because <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, I, Jordan's like, Luke, you can write in Kevin's voice, and I was like, well, I fucking better be able to because I've been listening to I've been I've been listening to Smodcast for like a decade. So, um, what do you write for them? Um, it's it's stuff here and there. Like for a long time, I was doing copy for email blast for the that kevin smith club where i kind of uh put together articles and summarize uh different episodes that kevin did weekly uh i'd also do like a news blast for smodcast.com about what was going on with the guys and everything else uh now it's kind of like taking on new forms like i'm going to start uh helping with jay's social media and and trying to provide copy for that like if there's products on jansalenbob.com and they need a something that's you know, sounds snappy. I get to throw in a description and stuff. It's just kind of like filling in where you can. And like, yo, it's just like when we worked at the movie theater, we were like, well, we want to work with movies. And that was kind of the way we could do it. And it's like, well, I want to get paid to write. And it's like, well, right. that's not going to be my everyday job. But if I'm writing copy for something and that's my paycheck, well, then by the transit of property, we're making that happen. And it's moral victory on moral victory until eventually 
we're doing the thing for real. So I, I think, I think that we did a good thing, me and you, by going and making our flicks. You know what I mean? And not yeah. waiting around. Like I think that was so imperative to like go home, go to Chicago. Like we both, you went out here, I went out here for it, dipped our toe that one time, yeah. and we we're like, I, this seems like a lot. And then we went and did what we <laughs> wanted to do, and like bled and fucking ripped open our souls and made our flicks that that said everything that there was to say about us and now i feel like we're in the mood to like all right but let's do it professionally you know what Very i'm saying cool. yeah that's what we're transitioning into that's beautiful uh jack first can we get the video of uh the movies and then will you somehow get a banner that says hashtag snoogans up i would really appreciate that we need to help <laughs> yeah, I was I wasn't even supposed to be there that day. You're a clerk, dude. I know. That's what's so crazy. And and that's been cool too, because I got to like go to different yeah. cities and stuff. It was cool. <laughs> so don't forget, Luke, hashtag snoogans. <laughs> right? Yeah. Also, I just thought about this. I'm like, I was advertising this show. I'm like, where my family can see it, and then I'm like, saying fuck every other word. It's like that was dumb. We're like, like we're like four, we're 42 minutes in. Like that was foolish. But I mean, nothing I can really do about it now. Oh, no, last thing I'll tell you because I haven't told you this. Okay. The other day, and this is my last name drop, and we can talk about our stuff and not Kevin and Jay because they're famous and we're not. But we're getting good juice out of it. Is like uh, one other benefit. One other benefit is like. You know, some people in the uh, in the office were uh, some people that work for Jay and Silent Bob Deliver since they have worked at movies uh, and continue to do so. Like Derek, who's been going through and to city to city um, since it's food work, they qualified just like a touch early for the the vaccine and stuff. And Jay heard that and he was like, "Yeah, you think you think you could do that if you weren't working for the snooch?" And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> he goes, "He goes, see this." He was wearing a mask, but it, it, the point was he was pointing at his face. He's like, you see this? Yeah, respect the snooch. And I was like, I do, I do. That's awesome. That's <laughs> too much. Look, I do. Man. I get it. I get it. I'm a big fan. Snooch, big the fan. Snooch, the snooch. I, I love you more than you love you. <laughs> You're very um, good. You're very good at what you yeah. do. Oh, so funny. <laughs> um. So uh, before we do move on uh, and bring Jack back, I was just wondering, like, what is, has there been a memory working in uh, Smodco? Is there anything that is just kind of like the the f memory that you like to go back to so far? Um. Yeah, like uh, when they did the drive-in for Kevin's 50th birthday, like the drive-in show of Reboot. And it was kind of like the first, it was August. So it was like sort of, it was like right before my wedding. And it was also when like, you could finally gather and do something, but it was still mad socially distant. Like, don't you get out of your car and like everybody's masked up and everything, but you could still go out and you felt like you were out there. Seeing that movie on the backdrop and stuff. I'm not from here. You know what I mean? So like, I'm always blown away by a palm tree and a mountain. And I don't know if that'll ever change. I uh, I, I, I just so weird. And I'm like, why is it still so warm? This is awesome. And like, I don't know, like <laughs> it's just the basic things where it feels very vacation -y out here. Um, so that was fun. That was just a beautiful night. Um, but every day is sweet there. Uh, even when it's not, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can't imagine not everybody like was, uh, you know, it's just a hard year on people. Like, so the yeah. fact that I was able to, to have a company that, looked out for everybody like not, like the little guy like who the fuck am i you know what i'm saying like i'm a i was a part-time assistant they could have been like hey it's the pandemic and and right. we can't keep you and they didn't you know like they found stuff for me to do and i don't think that everybody out here would do that it's, it's just huge so i really like owe them a lot for that that's awesome they still got that that heart they still got super the loyal indie heart. super yeah. loyal yeah super loyal too cool um all right, Jack, want to come back? Want to come hang out? Hey, guys. Hey, man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, Luke and I have been to a couple of shows, like live shows, including uh, when Jay and Silent Bob came to Chicago live. Music Box. Yeah, we yeah. saw them at the Music Box, and it was one of the most uncomfortable Q&As I've ever been to. The Music Why? Box is a wonderful 
uh, has a wonderful history of very awkward Q and A's that I've been to, uh, which is, is a lot of fun. Something in the air about it. I think it's when people it's get when people get close to um, either famous people or um, an artist that they really really respect. They just kind of lose their knees yeah. and the, a little bit, yeah. You know, and and it's hard. <laughs> I've I seen that. some. So is it just a really well, intimate space for that sort of thing to happen, and people are like, "Oh, oh my god!" It's that, and also people trying to be clever and funny um, on the wrong side of the microphone. Got it. So I feel uh, like it's, it also depends on who the filmmaker is too. Like, I saw Bo Burnham there, and it was like when he when he premiered Eighth Grade, and he was phenomenal. Um, I saw like Sean Baker brought Florida project and he was phenomenal and super interesting, but like the Q and a section was like, somebody would ask a question. He'd be like, yeah, I kind of said, you can find the article. I kind of talked about it. And I was like, I was like, I haven't read the article, man. I was like, tell me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Uh, so I, think a it depends on, I think it depends on how chatty they're feeling. Yeah. Um, I, so do we want whoever's watching to post us the most awkward questions and just make I'm us... saying that I think well that is very funny and I do like this idea uh, that... not where I was going with it though choices <laughs> I was thinking that this is such a cool format to ask questions so you can actually think about it and actually write it the way that you want and if you do have any questions for anybody anyone watching please feel free to ask I just thought that was a clever segue Jack jeez I just wanted to tell a story. I well, just wanted to tell a little story. And I just um, wanted to antagonize you. <laughs> We're off to a good start. We're doing good here. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is Louis. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Hey, uh, I my, feel like I question. feel like the three of us. Hang on. I feel like I feel like <laughs> the three of us. Somebody. It's just a race to who's going to like sing a Jim Croce song first. We're like the Whoa. most 70s looking white yeah. guys oh, I've ever it. seen on the Internet. Yeah. Every time I listen to Jim, Jim Croce, I say to myself, why do I not spend more time in my life listening to Jim Croce? You should. The Jim yeah. Croce you should. biography right next to me it's at all times. always time. a good choice he's so yeah. good beautiful and songs. that's and and that, that's the white the widest sentence from the widest podcast folks but not always not every week not every week not every week we, we're, <laughs> yeah we're we're trying to hit the our scorecard for diversity but that's, that's not the fun. way it feels <laughs> if i could save time in a bottle mm, one less set of footsteps out that's your true. door all right. Wow. We, like, I love those three different songs, too. I didn't expect that. All right. We, we know Jim Croce in the show. Jim Croce catalog. Sitting <laughs> in a prison, now I'm working at a car. I have a name. Moon. I have a name. <laughs> you got a dun 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 the other one is say, hey. Oh, that's a good one. I like All that. Right. Oh, Rapid Roy, that's not cowboy. Yeah, do my do yeah, now we all got to hold up at a cigarette. Uptown <laughs> got its hustlers. The Whoa, right. got its bums. Forty <laughs> Second Street got Big Jim Walker. And, and that's the point because... of, and literally, folks, you can do it too, because that's the point of, of, of all of this. You can manifest anything, and I just did it on, on live on air. You know what I'm saying? So, like, make your dreams come true. It was we true hope... alchemy. I really hope Jim Croce's spirit is watching us right now. I think he's in yeah. the, all of our rooms right now. He's wonderful. So. One, um, you need to produce a fucking Jim Croce force ghost for this show. I'll be on record as saying that I am taking this uh, autobiography and unofficially adapting it into a screenplay so I can get Dakota Loesch to play Jim Croce. Oh my God. And I, all I want is Ingrid Croce to recognize me wow. and see that that's what I'm doing. I started. I have no right to do it. It's <laughs> so good so far because I am adapting it word for word and I am killing it. Uh, and I just don't – I can't – they were talking about how like the last person they were thinking about casting as Jim Croce was um, Mandy Patinkin. And it's like, that's cool. But they were also saying that he aged out of it. Well, yeah. And, uh, it's pretty yeah. easy to age out of it. You know what I mean? So let's get Dakota. Let's start hashtag Dakota Loesch as Jim Croce because he is Make going that. to kill it. He's going to kill it. I'll give him yeah. my mustache. Please. Good. A good addition to the role. I can't wait. Jack, do you, have any, do you have any questions for Luke about being a filmmaker? Oh, sure. Or yeah, anything? A couple. There, the, yeah, the two that stick out in my mind uh, is, uh, like, where are you guys getting it that the Dune audience is the one with the never-ending pockets? 
I, I, I mean, I no, that's, 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 that's that. very he was relating that. Thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, I, Dune is very specific. They are really banking on Dune. Like well, every time I read about anything, they're saying like, Dune is the one that people are like, it's such a precious IP for people. But and, my the, and the Dune was fans why. that I know are like, because the yeah, the fans are like hardcore. Yeah, but that's true. I, I that's get a it. Very specific fan base. Whereas with something like superheroes, that's something that has. I mean, it's certainly been around a lot longer, but it's very cyclical. So every generation or so, it's always kind of geared towards the next, you know, younger group of people coming up. When uh, Jake, when we were, you know, growing up in the '90s, there were all sorts of animated Batman and Spider-Man series. So that was sort of the that next wave of that sort of thing. Um, but that happens earlier, you know, in the 80s. That's when um, uh, Alan Moore puts out uh, his take on uh, Batman in the comic books. Right. So, and it just gets a lot darker um, in that aspect. So, yeah. it's, it, so that kind of gets cyclical and there's waxing and wane. So I guess leading into my next question about that is, uh, is there an end in sight to this crest of superhero stuff that we're on between movies and streaming and all of these marvel films and all of you know wandavision and which is you know great i everyone's talking great stuff about it but where where does it you know the quality start to you know wane a little bit and when do we get onto you know vampires zombies whatever else so kind of a big (laughs) multi-tiered question unpack it at your risk well we were talking earlier about how um Oh, sorry. That was a question for Luke, and I'm just jumping on it. Luke, why don't you not talk? Not your show. Not, not your dude. show. <laughs> uh, I I think that we haven't even we haven't even gotten halfway up the mountain. I, yeah. I like I, like I like I know that's what's so crazy. Like quality aside, quality aside, like we're only just now. Like even when there was the TV shows that even like acknowledged the movies like they did crisis on infinite earths on the cw and ezra miller flashed in with with grant gustin on the flash like they acknowledge it here and there but like disney plus is only in the first season of like doing wandavision falcon the winter soldier like finally finally like they wouldn't even really acknowledge the flicks in the other marvel tv marvel tv was a different building you know what i'm saying like a whole separate division uh and now it's feige's baby too Right. right. And I love that shit. Daredevil is one of the best things I've ever seen. You know what I mean? He's coming like, back, like, right? That's the rumor. But like, and, but like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, and those shows were like, had a cursory tie to the MCU. But now we're only just beginning to do the movie stars in the TV, um, which is a paradigm shift in and of itself. And I think that we're like a decade out from like even hitting the peak. And uh, that's, uh, very well put. And I do think, um, you know, it's a realization that yes, I was what Iron Man came out in 2008. That's around when I graduated college. Uh, you know, uh, someone born in the year 2000 who was eight years old when that movie came out is now 21. Um, so they have grown up 100% with these being right. the, the litmus, yeah. like mm-hmm there there aren't better movies than this in in certain realms like as far as um getting people to the theater you know they didn't um, eat those late 90s early 2000s movies like we did where like you know like you'll get an x-men and x2 but you'll also get an electra and and now that right. there's not really kind of misses like there's right. not really there's not misses like that as frequently anymore it's all very well thought out and like crafted and organized you know well, a lot of that is the studios feeling, you know, too big to fail in a way. You know, there's just so they much haven't money yet, though. At, well, there's so much money at stake that they can't afford to. I mean, they're doing such a good job. They're doing such a good job of putting down a billion dollars and making back four. And as long as they can do that, they're just going to keep mining and mining. And that's when we were coming up, like the early, the first half of the 2000s was like, Oh, let's see what kind of movies work. And there's some weird, like, have you ever seen Around the World in 80 Days with Jackie Chan and uh, Steve Coogan? I re- I remember oh, I remember it being like fucking advertised on Movie Surfers on Disney right. Channel. This is another reason why I'm obsessed with Peter Jackson's King Kong because there's no reason for that movie to have been made other than he made the Lord of the Rings, he and then they it. were he like, "What do you What do you want to do? do?" And he's yeah. like, "I want to do 
a four hour fanfic of King Kong the way I see it in my head. And they were like, fine, I guess you'll make money. Go do it. But then when Feige came through that like done, it's so crazy. It's like, it, it is the never ending pockets. And it got to a point where when we were showing Endgame, I think, or infinity war, one of those, the reviewers, I read more than one review that was like, there's no point in reviewing this movie. It is a thing that you must experience. Yeah. If I say anything bad about it, I don't want to get that response. I don't care for that response. I don't care about this movie enough to bad mouth it because sure. I don't, it's whatever. So it gets to a point where it's like, if you want to be part of something zeitgeisty, come see this movie. You have to see it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, the other reason why like, uh, Black Panther, people were coming to see it six times in a row. Because Wonder wanna, Woman. Yeah, they want to. Wonder Woman is a great example. They want to live in this world. They want to be with these characters. Meanwhile, the uh, by the Avengers, it's like, next, what's the next plot point? We got to. We this story has been going on for a decade, mm -hmm. and now the story is continuing in an unbelievable way on Disney Plus, where it's like, where we're you had to. Um, economize is that the word economize uh like monetize well it's economize uh like show times in a movie theater because there's so many seats and you're open from so yeah, many yeah. from from open to close meanwhile streaming it's 24 hours the money never sleeps baby wall street money never sleeps starring gordon starring gecko gordon gecko yeah. um the so original of wall street so mm. any time is a good time what's the sequel one these marvel mm. films <laughs> I'm sorry. So any time is good to start these Marvel films and just put them on and just play them all the time. I mean, I told you personally that I can get Very through about an, an hour or 45 of yeah. them and there's still a half hour left. I'm like, okay, I, I, I see, I see. Um, but, you know, I'm always up for something new. And and the first time you watch them, they're a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, Without a doubt. I love, hey, I love them. I, there's not, I haven't really met a superhero movie I don't love, to be yeah. honest. So... It's hard to it's hard to disappoint me, but um, I, I'll be interested to see what happens. Like there was definitely, I think, somewhat of a fatigue. Like yeah, Aquaman was still making a billion, like you said, and yeah, Endgame was uh, a billion dollar movie that made two and stuff like that, three, whatever the fuck. Um, but it was already but, starting to decline at the theater. Like, yeah, absolutely. yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The hype um, train continues to wax and wane, and and and. I don't know I don't know enough of how excited people are to fill theaters uh, like to, right. to confidently say when uh, they'll be back in full force but Black Widow's coming and and those things are down the pike and they've got about a hundred of these things planned so they got to make their money back there is a tent pole I don't think we actually managed to get the uh, image up but there's a tent pole um, tent pole oh, we did. She's a babe every other week is there that's funny. That's very funny. Uh, can we get that, Jack? Did we put that up? I didn't see. Oh no, about sorry, my bad. Holes. No, like um, it was that list of movies that was like um, you know, every release that's coming out for the rest of the oh, year, and it's one. like oh, two. Yeah. It's a blockbuster every other week, and it was getting to a point where um, yeah, people really want to come fill the room for you know the new Pixar movie if it's a really good Pixar movie, but. You know, we got what was it? The sequels don't do as well, and you know, Deadpool not always. Didn't unless do very well. unless it's an unless it's Incredibles two or uh, Guardians that, two. That, that that shit made money. We so the, then you have to wait that, a decade yeah. to put out whatever sequel it is. That you not know. necessarily because they can Paul yearn Blart, for it. Paul Blart did not do well, Jack. Well, did Paul Blart one do well? Yes. Oh, very, I would very, bet it did. Well. That's before my time, but that movie broke a paradigm in the sense that. Um, uh, it was the first movie that was like released on the second weekend of January and it made a hundred million dollars. And they were like, you can make a hundred million dollars on the first weekend of January. That's Let's crazy. do that. Dude, so they, dude. Ob Observe and report is Zack Snyder's Paul Blart mall cop. It's such a gross movie. That movie is so <laughs> gross. Oh my goodness. Um, well, we are rounding out. This is so, it's so much easier to talk for an hour than I really thought. I could just keep going yeah, and man. going. It's live. I, 
Make sure yeah. you say the F word a lot to impress your family. Like <laughs> we did not advertise that this is a kid's show. I don't intend for it to. I'm not. I don't censor my guests. I'm grown man now. <laughs> uh, Jack, will no. you share with but, us? But your maybe audience? your guests should censor themselves. What's wrong with me? No, you're great. You're a beautiful guest. Okay. Beautiful creature. Jack, B- I Jack. want to see Slow Jam Girl. Oh, yes. The award-winning uh, music video, Slow Jam Girl. Oh, here, yes. Here it is. Uh. Uh-huh. This is a slow jam for the slow girl. Oh, girl, I want you because you're a girl. And I like you're a girl cause i'm totally into girls and none of my friends are girls and i only sing my song to a girl even though you're kind of tall for a girl Somebody want to come and bust a move, but I ain't gonna have it cause I'm with you. Come up to my place that I'll cook for you. Would you like to eat a peach or a poo with you? Girl, you got a hand, so let me hold it. If you want to smoke, then I can roll it. I don't care what other guys you've been with, cause I can bust a rhyme like ludicrous. Later, we're taking it down to the floor, bumping and grinding and begging for more. Doing it nasty or Jersey Shore. Baby, by morning, you know we'll be sore. Girl. <laughs> It looks, uh, it's it, it, it looks like the Strawberry Fields Forever video. <laughs> At least the first half of it. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, I can just, see your influences, Jack. Just jumping out of trees backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. <laughs> Where can we watch that? That is available on my website. That is the easiest place to find it, jackwint.com. You can find it Wonderful. on YouTube and... Uh, it's just easier to go through the website because you can find that and other videos as well. And you go, oh, there's some cool shit here. Oh, it's a pretty <laughs> good website. Did you make this? Yes, I did. Always um, watch the recommended videos too. <laughs> oh, those are crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you can find uh, the, the song. You can download the song on Apple and Spotify and basically oh, yeah. any kind of streaming service that's available. So give them that there. Spotify loot, guys. Yeah. Give them some of that some of that Bitcoin. Yeah. All those just the cents, the pennies are just piling up. <laughs> uh, all right. Well let's uh do plugs and and links and wrap this baby up. I like I said, we could keep going. Maybe we should uh work on this after party idea that I have. Yeah, that's that, We'll announce. We'll talk about that later. But uh, uh, Luke, any any final things that you want us to look at? But we sure had a good time when we started way back when. Uh, mm. d- oh yeah, I definitely want you guys to go listen to Jim Croce. Um, <laughs> really bad. <laughs> uh, just because you know, if you liked if you liked even a little bit of what we've talked about here tonight. Um, but I'm also, so glad uh, you crazy <laughs> wound up coming into the conversation. <laughs> if we're gonna plug uh, maybe, anything tonight, it has yeah. to be Jim Croce. This was the best <laughs> choice. Bad Movie Brunch is on Apple Podcast, uh, SoundCloud. Um, you can find it all over the place. Uh, BBFprods.com is uh, the BBF Productions website. You can also find us all over the place on socials, um, Facebook, and whatnot. Uh oh, and you can watch my flicks on Amazon Prime. Uh, Break is up there as well as Winnie and Charlotte's Last Night at the Oasis. Uh, we didn't really talk much about it. My stuff. We talked about like Kevin Smith and Jim Croce the whole time. I, I feel like I feel like I was like I was like, wait, I, I fuck my shit. Let's talk about photographs and memories for an hour. But I mean, that's uh, not the part of the show. We'll have you back please, without a doubt. Please without watch a doubt. Uh, if you have you have time. Winnie and Charlotte's Last Night at the Oasis uh, and or Break on um, uh, Amazon Prime. <laughs> Luke, my mom has a question for you, pal. Uh, you I see it? it. It comes up wonderfully. Gigi, uh, I would <laughs> love to direct Jake again. And I'm sorry that my wife slapped him, but I felt like uh, it was the only way to get my point across. It really, I needed the shock value. And, and we didn't do the take that many times, Hi, to be fair. We shot that whole thing in like two, two and a half, three hours at most. So like we were we were moving so quick, the slap didn't even leave a red mark. You would have noticed it. You know what I mean? Indie film. 
There's one more question before we wrap up here, and Aiden Wright wants to know, are there any non-film related podcasts <laughs> that Luke is uh, active in? I do, I do I like a, another podcast with... Jim, uh, so explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, I do another podcast with uh, Aiden Wright uh, called NFL Mayo. It's a, a football, a weekly football podcast. I think this, this past week was the first week we actually took off. And how, uh, do, you spell, how do you spell that again? <laughs> NFLMAO. NFLMAO? Yeah. NFL. It's, pretty, NFL it's, MAO. Got it's it. clever, right? Because it's like football, yeah. but we also LMAO. Why we do it? .com? Yeah. Uh, no, it's a, uh, yeah, there's no website. It's just on Apple Podcast and oh, okay. uh, uh, MySpace. SoundCloud, just MySpace, Xanga. <laughs> um, it's all and over. I didn't really plug about- it. Because I, I thought you wanted my film stuff, and and I was like, nobody cares about my football podcast. I I, I actually tell Aiden I post it, but it's like Creed thoughts on uh, on the Office, where it's just a word doc. Um, and I'm I'll like, remember. yeah, good good episode, Aiden and T. I say to them, and it's just on my phone. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. This is a uh, lion. He is. Uh... I'm glad he took the bait and, and, and hung out with us the entire time. I was really hoping you would. And Luke's, you got your cat had some love too. He was there in the beginning and then he just sort of. Yeah, he was life. there. He's over here licking his tummy. Just kind of fucked off. That's he, fine. He came back a little while ago and he said, oh, are you still doing that thing? He are came you? coming in left and right. Like he was batting around shit. Went to go lick his tummy a little bit. Um, yeah, no, the next time we have you on, I'll be sure to ask you about uh, some sort of football question um yeah make sure you ask about sports it's good is there do you like the film the longest yard my favorite movie uh football movie is invincible because it opens with jim croce's i've got a name (laughs) is that the uh the mark Wahlberg one yeah it it does it does open with that too i swear to god i 100 percent believe you philadelphia eagles right yeah (laughs) <laughs> no, but uh, I, it's, yet, so. it's not actually my favorite one. That's a good movie. Go Disney. It's a good but, film. Uh, yeah, sports. Your, all that your stuff. favorite one is Little film. Little Giants, right? It would be. It would make sense because I am a Canton Little Giant. But um, I don't know, man. You said Longest Yard, like Burt Reynolds' Longest Yard. That that's tasty. I yeah, like that. Both one. of them. Are, I actually really enjoy both of them. Believe me. I that. love Sandler's as well, but it's just a different love. It's not uh, like a good one, whereas the Burt Reynolds movie is like a good movie. That's a flick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you seen the North Dallas 40? I I actually have not. Oh, Nick Nolte, 1970s uh, NFL. So they're just like doing all the drugs in the locker room. It's gritty. Like, oh, it's so 70s. It's great. And that's how the movie 70s. opens. <laughs> is Jim Crow in that? You know, he might Did a little press down low, now my mess and working at the car wash blue. <laughs> Operator. <laughs> this, 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 this autobiography starts with him calling an operator da, 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 collect. Da, da, da. And he's like, cry. It's, it's Jim Croce. And she's like, wait, Jim Croce? Excuse me. Seems it's an autobiography you're reading? It's actually, it's Did not an autobiography. in the plane? No. I was going to say, like, it rude. was recovered? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't that, know the that difference That was rude. I'm sorry, Jim Croce. An autobiography and a biography. Okay. Uh, I didn't mean to call you auto. I was, no, I was like, blown it's away. Written by his, it's written by his wife and her okay. uh, partner. So it's it's very personal story because mm-hmm. it, I think it a lot of it will be from her point of view. Um, but they're doing a good job telling it from his and it's kind of like you know the literally the first shot is of him in a plane flying and it's like oh my oh, god you can sell it's this, kind of this, right this oh my god this, well it's written to be a movie that's why i'm just writing it because it's already written to be a movie in, oh, ingrid croce jelly roll chicago at gmail.com <laughs> that's not the way it feels <laughs> <laughs> no 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 um thank you so much uh if you want to help us feel free to venmo also if you are an independent filmmaker and have links so you can share your indie flicks with me please. uh please send them to this uh gmail account i want to watch everything i want to watch it i want to watch it i want to see what you're doing um and i don't care about sundance right now but don't tell Sundance about that. Um, okay. And then, uh, is there anything else in the banner section that I forgot? Are Benita fish big? 
Banner oh, yeah. year and the yeah. Jelly Roll podcast. <laughs> I really, really appreciate you guys uh, doing this with me. I really appreciate everybody hanging out for an hour. It's uh, This is more people than I really expected to uh, be hanging with us. And I had a great time. I, I could just keep going and going and going. So Come back next week. We'll talk more about movies. Yeah, and me Jim too. Yeah. Uh, we'll have our, uh, the guest is Tom yes. Hush from uh, NoCo Cinema and WGN Radio. So I am very excited to talk oh, to him. because I name is, dropped him. He's, um incredibly knowledgeable and uh, has a lot of opinions. So that's two things that make for a great conversation. I uh, I think that's it. Uh, Jack, anything else? That's it. Go watch something. Go enjoy yeah, yourselves. Go hang out. Watch, watch my past stuff on YouTube. Watch my movies on Prime. Luke, thank you so, so much for hanging out. Uh, Jack, thank you so, so much for producing. And... Uh, all right, guys. I'll see you guys in the future. Salute. <laughs> no, no, no.